Hello everybody, it's the City Mad Haven here today, and well, I can definitely say, without any doubt, it is pretty nice to be back. Um, the other hand is, there's a few things I wanted to talk about a while ago that really I never took the time out. This was something I wanted to mention um, a few months ago, but never got around to doing so. So, I'm going to get to it now. And the one thing I wanted to talk about was... Random shadow buffs. They have popped up. And the one that has hit me the hardest out of every single one that I've seen introduced into the game. And, you know, it's it's it could be a mistake on the developer's part for maybe not labeling it or just not including it inside the patch notes for anything else that they did it. But it is something, in my opinion, that is making the meta change heavily and kind of needs to be addressed. So, back when the version 5 first came out, um, I actually had to go back and look at my review of the tank, and then go through multiple patch notes, multiple buff lists, through the forums, uh, through the Watt news page, and not anywhere could I find where they buffed the view range of the version 5 to 390. Um, I do believe I mentioned this a while back about it. Um, one of my biggest problems that I have with this is just since you put the view range of a tank destroyer that has still concealment at 326 uh, you're making some super heavy tanks essentially completely obsolete uh, just because this thing has a faster reload it's going to be hitting way harder for instance we look at the 60 TP um, I have optics on this uh, the crew is not on it at the moment so 447 but Basically, this has got the same, uh, essentially the same loadout as the version 5, but in a heavy format. But ver uh, versing the version 5, this tank is going to fall behind heavily whenever it comes down to it. Just because I clicked the wrong buttons, and now i got to make sure I transfer it correctly. 499 uh, view range compared to it's still concealment at 391. Let's go jump back over to the version 5. We're looking at 510 uh, view range, along with a still concealment of 326. Not to mention, this thing also has 850 alpha, while the 60 TP only has 750 alpha and has less penetration. So my problem with this is the fact that both these tanks can be sitting out in the open. Um, and every single time, the version 5 is always going to get the first shot off. Just because they decided to buff a lot of tank destroyer view range. Originally, the 268 version 4 right here only had a view range of, let's say, I believe it was 360. They bumped it up. Uh, the 263, I believe it always had 390. Uh, the 268 originally had, I think it was either 350, 360, or 370. But since they removed um, binoculars from the game and camouflage net, now these tanks, they're getting all these view range buffs because they're not able to really spot out targets. And it's kind of breaking the balance of the game whenever it comes down to looking at a tank destroyer and wondering if it's going to be good or not. Tank destroyers right now are actually outmatching some super heavies almost in every single aspect. In the trading aspect, everything else. The version 5 getting an armor buff, which has drastically changed how this tank is played along with the E4 also getting an armor buff, which has drastically changed how that tank is played. So, uh, up first, we're going to be taking a look at the match I had inside the uh, version 5, literally maybe an hour ago. Um, we're going to be playing on Pilsen, the loadout on this tank. It's just my basic Russian crew. If you guys want to check that out, it's over in the IS-7. Basically, anything that is Russian-related on my channel is going to have this crew. It has not been changed the entire time I've been using it, other than the fact that I do believe I took off clutch braking and threw on off-road driving, and that would be about it. So, as you guys can see, uh, top tier, heavily top tier, as a matter of fact. There's uh, three tier 10s in the team, and then a lot of tier 9s. I'm so sorry for the tier 8s that there's only three of them inside the matchmaker. Um, this is another reason why I, you know, took my break that I did for the month, because we have... You know, it's like, I want to play a tier 8, and I end up either the only tier 8 on my team, or one of four, one of three, against an entire lobby of 10s. Um, 
that is something that I really want to see getting addressed into the future of the game just because if it continues to go like this uh, our player base I I can say it right now uh, in, in the month I've been back not a lot of gamer tags I'm recognizing uh, me and blade you know playing like Muppets there's a pull there that we kind of both hit and I hit him but just whenever okay I, I've, I've hit the point with World of Tanks and everything else that I've just, you know, I, I want to see the game blossom. I really do. Thing is, is that each time they pump something out and it's basically the wrong thing to pump out, they're doing all these buffs, they're going to make it really hard to readjust a matchmaker because you have all these super powerful tanks that are just outperforming everything currently. Um, what else? What else to talk about? The, uh information that I shared from the super test uh, keep in mind my public discord I don't have a single person in my public discord that I get information from from the super test the reason why they are expressing themselves publicly that they support me why would I use them to get information from the super test so over on discord massive crap show and uh, yeah just um, apparently the consequences of releasing information could lead to an account ban. So yeah, you're right. I'm not going to share the names of anyone who has helped me because guess what? This is thousands of hours that people are investing into their accounts to be able to have everything and now you're threatening to ban their accounts. So, uh, there's that. Um, you know, you guys, I really do believe in transparency whenever it comes down to updates and buffing you know, from my point of view in a lot of games that I play, because uh, World of Tanks is not the only game that I play. Um, my setup currently is, we're, we're talking about a monstrous PC. I'm playing on PC. I play on console. I just barely ordered my Series X to be able to continue to play on console with um, you know, better graphics, newer games. Uh, probably going to be playing Apex whenever I get it because of the 120 uh, refresh rate, frame rate, I think with 1080p, maybe 4K. Just a maybe. But the fact is, I take gaming serious because whenever I get home, this is what I do. This is what a lot of people do. You guys get off work, you get home, first thing you think to yourself about is, oh, I'm ready to play this game, you know, to help pass the time and relax. This is what I do to relax. And, you know, for me, this, this is how I relax. I, I play games. Now, at the same time, the games that I play, World of Tanks, this is a game that is competitive. There's a lot more to this game than just loading up and playing it like it's a single player game. This is a team cooperative based game. And whenever it comes down to balancing, you know, there, there's a lot of tiny little things. Like if you change a gun's millimeter by like three millimeters, that's going to make it to work and overmatch new plates, make it to work and do a little bit more damage. And it's going to drastically change the tank. For instance, version 5 with the armor buff that they gave this thing, I'm now able to reverse side scrape, block damage without much of a problem. I mean, yes, I am exposing my hatch on the right side. It'd be better off to reverse side scrape left. But knowing the caliber of the enemy's guns, that's going to help you out because the side armor on this is only 50. So, what I'm getting to essentially is the super test and how they handled the leak is wrong. And, you know, I, I applied to be a CC, which means maybe my channel had a little bit more attention because they probably had a scout checking me out or whatever. But the fact is, I have released so much information from the super test and they barely noticed by me only releasing one tank when prior, I released almost the entire line of the E100 a week before the um, official stream even talked about it, that it was public. So, I mean, hey, I'm very good at what I do, and I have people who are willing to take the time out to help. The fact is, Discord is not how I do it. Okay, I'm going to share this with everybody, because there's one thing I'm going to be asking at the end of this video. The dev team, the super testers, the people who reported my channel saying that leaked information popped up, go ahead, tell them about this video. Because the fact is, I will not stop at all. There's always going to be a leak. There are always people you can meet 
that you can talk to, that you can have a little bit more charisma with, to make them like you. But it, I'm not saying make them like me, okay? They have the same ideals and the same view set about the game, and they want the game to be absolutely successful. All right, if you guys were a little bit more transparent about what you're releasing, um, in my opinion, if you stopped and you told me, oh, um, we uh, announced that we were going to be releasing this on this day, but we're going to cancel it now and have to push it back by like a month, I would actually sit there and say, okay, I am okay with that because guess what? You guys are telling us what you're doing. You're mentioning it. You're letting us know this is what you plan on doing. And the fact that you now have to cancel it and delay it for a little bit, I'm completely okay with that because guess what? You're doing something that's going to be the embitterment of the game rather than keeping us in the dark for the longest time and then releasing something immediately that's such a massive change to the game that it's just not fun. Um, up next is the UI and UX. User interface, so kind of like what we see here at the score screen, uh, what we see inside the match, everything else, just little things that are comforts of life. Um, UX is known as user experience. Um, in all honesty, the garage, the user experience in the garage, I'm really enjoying it. I like it. However, tanks, I remember um, watching the stream that the devs had saying that we're going to be changing tech tree to tanks. Um, why is that? I read tanks and I think to myself, I'm going to go over to this tab and I'm now going to open it and I should have access to all these tanks. Um, and then whenever I'm looking at the tab and I'm going over things inside it, you know, I now realize, um, what do I call these? Uh, tanks? Do I just call them tanks? Or if I try talking to a veteran player, uh, what tanks are good? Um, what, what tank line should I go down? When in fact, it should be tech tree. Because to us veterans that want to help out the newer player base, we know them as a tech tree. And you guys are changing that, making it a little bit confusing to uh, assist new players who are getting onto the game. You know, your veteran player base, the people that want to help the others are the ones that you need to focus on a little bit more. Um, I'm not saying, you know, everything that we want to do, by the way, lag, Wi-Fi. Um, servers, I think, need to be updated a little bit because I checked all my connections and I looked at my peaks and my lows during this time. Everything was fine. It's something to do with the servers, but it's okay. Hardwired connection, I don't experience any lag ever, so. But jumping back to the tank tab, everything else, for newer players who are getting into the game, Changing the UI and banning people from the super test for having an opinion about the UI, in my opinion, it needs to stop. You know, I I talk to Slap the Fish. It's not like I'm gonna ban him from my friends list, ban him from my Discord because he has an opinion on artillery. You know, like for me, the fact is we need multiple opinions. We need multiple type of people. We need a toxic community, and I hate to say that, we need a toxic community. Because if there's never any toxicity, how can you know what's wrong? How can you determine how to um, judge a situation without a toxic community, with a toxic group of people or whatever? You know, you kind of need those people to help you learn and grow, okay? That's something that it's always going to be like that. It doesn't matter where you go. You're going to run into uh, people who are just outright stubborn, hard-headed, and everything else. It, it's going to happen. Now, I know how far off subject I am right now. It is nice to be back to the game. But these are things that need to be talked about. The fact is, I'm a content creator for the game. I applied to be a CC. I didn't get the CC. I didn't say anything about it. I'm not doing any retaliation because I didn't get selected. But the fact is, the requests that are going to be coming up later in the video will only benefit the CCs, not me. Keep that in mind. I'm not here for myself. I don't even make money from doing this. I do this for the fact that there are new players coming into the game and need help. So, what should we do? We should help them. One of the biggest ways to help them is to remove the Cold War being the starting area of the game. Put them back in World War II. Stop trying to push this Cold War agenda that you guys have. Just because I have met a couple of new players that outright started in Cold War that we're putting up group posts over on Xbox to where, you know, you can stop, you can go to the group post and uh, be able to join and talk to these people. 
Now, one of them has invested 50 hours into the game, and he's not even past a second tank in Cold War. Then he, you know, he was getting ready to quit the game, and I told him, hey, come over to World War II and try this out. I bought him a premium tank. I played with him for about an hour, an hour and a half. And the thing is, now, he's already up to a tier 7. And he is loving the game because of how fast progression is over in World War II as compared to Cold War. He outright said the game feels way too grindy. Then he comes over to World War II, and out of nowhere, he's enjoying the game. Just because it's not as grindy. By the way, more lag. Um, it, it's just something that needs to be addressed. Uh, matchmaking needs to be addressed. Balancing, uh, kind of, in my opinion, needs to be public. That way you can get feedback from the community as well as your super testers that are testing it out. Having feedback from the community, for instance, the E4, I'm sorry, I don't care what any of the developers say about the E4 saying that its win rate right now is average, and its bounce ratios are kind of showing some other statistics as well. Thing is, you gotta think about how much that tank is played. There's almost an E4 every single team. Of course it's gonna have a 50% win rate whenever there's one per team, and that's kind of the entire reason why I said statistic-based buffing is flawed, because if you have a very powerful tank, it's going to be played a lot more, which means its win rate's always going to be 50-50. Every once in a while, you're going to have two on the same team, one on the enemy team, you know, and all of a sudden, two of them get a loss. One of them gets a win. Or two gets a win, one gets a loss. Now its win rate's too high, now its win rate's too low. That's where it's going. Rather than buffing a tank according to its win rate, why not look at the amount of battles that are being played inside that tank every single month. I think that's a really good way to look at it. And then the focus on the player group that's actually playing those tanks. And then ask that player group, like, why do you guys like this tank? What do you, what would you like to see buffed in this tank? For instance, the 113, a very underrated tank, a very underplayed tank nonetheless, but somehow still retains a 60% win rate every single month. The reason why it retains that win rate is because the people who play it know how to play it and they enjoy it while new players that jump in that tank struggle to play it and fall apart very quickly, yet the tank is not being looked at for any balancing purposes or anything else, yet you guys buff the 121 line, and gun depression, I don't really think that line needed the gun depression, if anything, I think the 121 needed a little bit more hull armor in the front to help kind of match the 430U aspect, but not make it a 430U Chinese medium, uh, with the same hull armor, maybe a little bit less and just trying to help it out. Bump up the side armor to maybe 90 millimeters. I can't remember exactly off the top of my head what it is because it's been a while since I've played. A lot of tanks I've forgotten about. Honestly, it was nice to take that break. Now, talking about the super test and everything else, I get information, I do. A lot of people get information. The only thing is though, is that I share it. I will share that information. Now, this is directed at Max Chaos. Max Chaos, a while back I hit you up in the forums about crews. Because uh, immediately after 6.0, um, it was super easy to delete your crews from your roster. It was literally a double tap. Okay? And now, I'm going to share this. I also play with Razor. I play with custom remotes that are expensive that cost quite a bit okay you know how easy it is for me just to go oh, bx oh no i deleted a, a crew or setting it down on my lap oh no i i started a match by setting it on my lap that is what i'm going to be getting to so the only thing i just gotta say is i have three things if you guys want me to stop posting stuff about the super test, okay, there are three things you have to consider. Two of them are mandatory, one of them is optional. The first one that's mandatory, I join the super test for one month. I get to participate, I get to record, and I get to release information from it that you guys allow me to. Which means I cannot release that information until the buffs have already been applied because I want to go over the process that you have to be able to work in the super test. The second one is to lower your consequences for leaked information. Because guess what? People make mistakes. 
If you want to stop and be like, oh, you made a mistake. Because guess what? The Rasarante information was never leaked to me directly. It was actually posted in the wrong spot. And the fact that you guys took it out of proportion means that it is fact that the Rasarante is getting a buff. That that entire line is getting a buff. I kind of took that and said to myself, this is a maybe. This is a 50-50. Okay, but we did find the information on the World of Tanks forums, keep in mind, publicly. And I somehow managed to catch it immediately the second it was posted. I can't remember who posted it, but guess what? I downloaded the image immediately, got my hands on it, and had one thing, which was just the gun. That's it. Other than that, the consequences that you guys have and the fact that you're willing to ban someone's account permanently is wrong. Lower the penalty for it. People make mistakes. The third one is I want you guys to support your CCs a little bit more. Give them information a week prior to whenever you're going to be announcing it publicly on your stream that you're going to be releasing something new into the game. That way, your content creators for the game, your CCs, your community contributors, actually benefit rather than just getting a, a little bit more upvoting over on Discord or Reddit, because who uses Reddit? I don't even use Reddit. I use Reddit probably every once in a while. I'd rather go to GameFAQs.com, because at least I have the entire cheat selection for uh, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas for the PlayStation 2. Yes, I'm a nerd, and I know. But supporting your content creators and giving them the ability to actually have information a little bit before you guys actually release it, I think is a much better benefit to being a uh, community contributor rather than just getting a couple of giveaways. Um, honestly, hearing from a couple of your guys' CCs, finding out that the Reddit team is actually the ones that control who gets the amount of giveaways every single month, I'm sorry. Redditors apparently get the most, or Twitch gets the most. Um, Twitch, they get subscriptions. YouTube, you ha you can do YouTube for free. And YouTube is probably the biggest community in the entire game because there's more people that have access to YouTube than Discord, than Reddit, than Twitch. And yet you give them the least amount of giveaways. That, to me, is a little confusing. Other than that, that's about it. If you guys want me to stop looking for information and having my team, you know, the, the team that I've built over the course of the past year and a half to scrounge around finding information from the super test, message me on Discord. I will be screenshotting it as well, depending on your reply. But other than that, if you guys don't get back to me, I'm still going to be continuing the same process of getting information. And if you have any retaliation towards my account, I'll just turn into the Mighty Jingles for Xbox. And I will have multiple other little content creators that will be sending me videos. And guess what? I'll still be making content on the game. So, that's where I stand. You guys need to be a little bit more transparent. You do. Just because the community needs it. Changing the UI, everything else causes a lot of problems and i want to be going over the ui but this has already turned into a 23 minute uh run so i'm not gonna you know include another seven minutes worth of stuff but i'll be going over the ui in another video other than that hope you guys enjoyed the matches that you saw sorry for the absolute monologue that's going on but these are things that truly need to be addressed the fact that we have tank destroyers that can outmatch super heavies in speed concealment damage penetration the fact that this was literally maybe my third match in this tank in two months and I did 9,000 damage and the two matches prior were over 4,500, one of them being a 6,800 damage match, but I didn't want to have two back-to-back -back version 5, so we had the MX-50B, which, yeah, a little bit of server lag, but, eh, you know, lag, it happens. Uh, other than that, you guys have a nice, fantastic day, night, afternoon, whatever time it is for you or whenever you're catching this. Or if you're catching this a year down the road and the devs actually did something about it. Sweet. Other than that, I'm out of here. You guys, have fun. And I'll catch you guys all in the next one. And see you on the battlefield. Seriously though, don't shoot me with artillery. The thing's freaking broken. Broken.